Imagine there's no Google. Do, 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 do. It's actually kind of hard to imagine. <laughs> um, so imagine, <clears throat> imagine if you will, an internet without Google, or this level of tech without an internet. Bum bum bum. So imagine there's no Google. Uh, because this is something that might actually happen. Uh, probably not all at once, but the potential, you know, it, it, just imagine Google uh, metaphorically takes its ball and goes home, just like cashes out. Uh, <clears throat> think of the things that would be broken. Uh, there are a, there are a sprawling quantity of services that uh, that Google provides because it provides them for free free uh, <clears throat> but imagine it simply stopped doing those things if it did there would be a pretty difficult we would have a pretty difficult time um, getting through finding stuff basically I mean finding stuff is a pretty good start there are other services that Google provides Gmail in particular people getting on people would have to get on a, a separate email service email is one of those things that I'm kind of spotty on um, security wise because it's it's it is an insecure method of communication I mean that you the fact that you're bouncing through services there's no end-to-end -end encryption built in or anything like that I mean I don't even think some of these protocols are encrypted on, over the wire. Not to mention the whole idea of, you know, any type of separate email hosting is going to be hosted on someone else, someone else's server. What I think is much more likely is uh, some kind of collapse of the revenue of these companies, or, or a drop in the the ability to pay or the, the desire to pay whatever prices for these ads that they're, they're currently getting. So doing something like that would, would cause necessarily a drop off of their revenue to the point that perhaps their service just stops working. Um, that's interesting. Google corporate Gmail is actually probably one of their better actual services you know, where they're actually providing a service, not even necessarily, well, they're, you know, they're doing breakdowns of ads and stuff like that for all, it's just, none of it's good, so imagine it's just gone, first thing is searching, so there's obviously lots of other search engines that are up, um, <clears throat> but some of these actually reference Google themselves, uh, the, the point is it would be more difficult to find stuff which means websites like uh, aggregators would be much more uh, useful much more interesting because if you don't know that a website exists this is like the OG internet days uh, you know this is like someone writes a website down on a sheet of paper for you and writes it down you know spells it correctly and all that because they didn't spell it correctly, you're not getting there. Because <laughs> it was uh, otherwise hard to find it, because you would have to find it based off of the, the topic that it talked about, and whether or not it was getting scraped or not, um, by whatever the web crawlers are, the search engines are. So the, the point of Google is just an aggregator of information. So I see... Um, you know, so, something happens when you're an aggregator, when you're a... Uh, someone, I don't want to say up on a pedestal, but like a high visibility person, um, you know, people send you stuff, people share things with you. And when they share things with you, you become a little bit of the content person who decides, you know, does this, is this worth sharing? Is this not worth sharing? So aggregators, uh, probably topical aggregators, uh, link sites, I can totally see something like that coming through. 
because it isn't necessarily see and this is like like um, news blogs and stuff like that so garbage like boing boing that kind of stuff I don't even know if boing boing still around um, but just sites that uh, link aggregators they they direct you around the internet and uh, they don't necessarily know whoopsie they don't necessarily know um, who you are or what you're doing like in order for Google to target ads to you you need to have some level it needs to know enough about you to be able to say oh you know Troy is interested in X Y and Z so here's X Y and Z uh, if I Troy am just uh, coming from the opposite direction I'm visiting another website that has you know similar interests to me then I'm basically relying on that person to to find things that are relevant to me and share them so I think aggregator sites and sharing sites are going to be more important. Um, <clears throat> now doing something like this without the internet, that's going to be very interesting because then we start talking about different technology, uh, and different ways of disseminating that technology. The potential for having our devices, and I just kind of you know, brainstormed this out in 10 minutes or something like that. The idea that you could have a, a, a service and a server, and I'm not even sure if it would be a protocol. It might be a protocol. It probably needs to be a protocol that would uh, allow peer-to-peer -peer connections on your cell phone. So your cell phone, there's no cell network, or there's extremely limited cell network. Uh, and you have Wi-Fi or you know some other form or it's a completely separate device it would probably be a cell phone though the potential for having that kind of battery saving um, you know something that can be on for so long uh, that seems really it seems too useful to pass up uh, but the device would basically be somewhat promiscuous and connect to uh, whatever was nearby and share whatever you approved to share so I like the idea, this is the, the scuttlebutt model, um, which is, I think, has the model. I think that is the model going forward, or some adaptation of that. Uh, scuttlebutt provide, lets you uh, maintain a diary, a, an encrypted diary, that you share with individuals. And basically, it's, it's like your blog, uh, and at any other connection details that's maintained with your uh, your public key you know, uh, encrypted basically and then when you connect to someone else you connect and share your diary and then at any point that person can flip through your diary or you know whatever you would publicly share diary might not be the right word but uh, this goes back to the the idea the Luke Smith idea of everyone should have their own website which I think is an excellent idea I think it's something that brings people back to understanding the technology while they use it um, <clears throat> I don't necessarily think everyone needs their own email server but whatever anyways the idea is that you would have something that you share you know with private people uh, you would have private communications and you would have like a public facing uh, blog or sharing of information and then as you walk past someone say uh, your device would connect uh, you would pick up the public information from them and exchange it and store it. And depending on how promiscuous that person is, they might choose to share, you know, they might want to share your information, but they might also want to share information that you've connected to, you know, one layer deep uh, or, you know, five layers deep if they want to get tons of stuff. And then they can leaf through that information later. And the, the potential for this to replace newspapers or replace this uh, an in, more inefficient, inefficient uh, person to person communication, I think is the power that's there. Imagine this for, you know, if you do drywall or if you, uh, you're you selling some chickens, you can put that on your, your wall. <clears throat> and then as you walk through the street, at, you share this information. Then at the end of the day, someone 
gives you a call or sends you a letter that says, hey, I'm interested in those chickens or stops by your house tomorrow because they reviewed the data. Uh, or, you know, they get a notice that says, you know, someone, uh, someone is interested in hiring security people. Okay, well, I do security. And then you, your phone gets a little alert and you stop and uh, I'm looking for this person. You know, I've got a picture of the face there and you can look for that person and say, hey, I do, I do security, uh, that kind of thing. So making it more peer-to-peer, -peer, making it less dependent upon infrastructure. There's definitely something there. And I think cell phones can do it. At least I hope they can. If, it, if they'll let us. Let us.